So we wanted to just share with you about our story as a church. Back in 93, I was working at a church, Calvary Chapel in Northern California, Sacramento, and Cindy was selling real estate at the time and was doing relocations from Sacramento to Boise and just had Idaho on her mind. She talked to me about it that I don't know about it. She said, you know, I don't know what it is about Idaho, but I just feel like it's on my mind. And so I was like, what do you mean Idaho? What's in Idaho? And so uh, then one day our pastor just asked me, what are your long-term plans? And I said, well, I don't know. I got to think about that, pray about it. I went home that day and walked through the door and Cindy says, it's time, isn't it? <laughs> I just <laughs> knew it was time to move to Idaho. And he was just like, what? <laughs> And so I said, I don't know, I just need to pray. So I went and started praying and I felt like God just said, just listen to what your wife's saying and check it out. So we decided to go to Boise and we thought we're not going to talk to each other about this. We're just gonna go there, check it out, pray, and then we'll talk to each other at the end because we didn't want to like, you know, just influence each other. Right. So we did that. That was uh, summer of 93. And um, we came home. And we came home, we opened up our journal, and it was just really exciting because we both had pretty much the same thing and said, we're home. When we hit the Idaho border, we just knew this was our home. It just felt like home. We moved to Boise in March of 94, and it was two months later in May that we began to meet at BSU in the Student Union Building on Sunday nights. And our first service, we had a college student who was actually doing worship for us. She invited her friend, and Cindy was doing the children's ministry. You were, yeah. you were the children's <laughs> ministry. Yeah. And, and that first Sunday, you know, I gave uh, an invitation, and he received Christ, which we then, like, I think, baptized him that summer yeah. in, the, in the Boise River. But that's how we, very humble beginnings. And then, uh, and that's how we started. And then we also started meeting at our home on Thursday nights for a Bible study. We had children's ministry in our, in our back bedroom, I think, or yeah. outside if the weather was good. And, uh, and we started reaching out to our neighbors. And so started building the church that way with our neighbors in the early days. And that was our first few years. But what was difficult was just mainly the financial struggle. After we moved here, Cindy quit real estate. I only had like a three month salary and then I had to start working. Uh, so I was working as a contractor doing sound system installations. Right, and when I quit real estate, it was just, I knew that I was supposed to support him and what he was doing and not build a business. And so it was really a hard time financially. Yeah, and I just remember every time that I would go to pay the rent, I would just breathe a sigh of relief and say, you know, thank you, Jesus, we made it here another <laughs> month. Um, but at the same time, there was a lot of just discouragement. We had comments that were made to us. You know, one person said, you know, what's your trip? Why are you here? And, you know, there's already, you know, Calvary Chapel here. You don't need to be here. And and it was like, it just hit me. And I remember going to a pastor's conference and I was just like broken. And I said, Lord, I gotta hear from you. Uh, it, did you. Do you really want us to be here? And immediately, like the Lord spoke to my heart out of John 15, that you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit that will last. And that sealed the deal for me. From that point on, it was like I never looked back. I knew God called us here, and if anybody had a problem with it, you know, you need to take it up with God because God called us here. You know, we started working with a property manager, broker, and he found some pro some space that could be leased at the Hillcrest Shopping Center. And we said, well, this is all we can afford. And he said, are you kidding me? I can't get you warehouse space in Garden <laughs> City for that. I said, well, just see what you can do. They took our offer. It was just bad re tail space, but it was good for a church. And we had that at the Hillcrest Shopping Center then for the next 12 years. And we were on, we paid month to month for 12 years, never knowing when they were gonna kick us out. But in that process, we thought we need to look for something permanent. And we had moved to the Southwest part of town 
when we realized that there was so much development going on out there. And, and also we felt like we were really close to the other Coward Chapel. We wanted to sort of spread out in the valley. And so we started looking for land that we could purchase, um, that we could afford to purchase. And we put that out to our church and there is a couple that uh, found this 15 acres on Lake Hazel and told us about it. And so we went to our church and we said, okay, here's a possibility. We have this land and um, we need to hear from you. If this is something that you want to get involved with. And that Sunday we had like $120,000 come in yeah. so that we could put a down payment on the land and that was like a total, total miracle. So, I mean, we just knew God is in this. But that was in 2003 that we purchased the property. We immediately started to do what we could do to, to develop it. But the problem was there was no sewer or uh, water utilities. And so we thought, okay, well we could do this, but we have to do it well, we got a septic system. And we just never really had the money and nothing ever materialized with that. Then 2008 hit, the Great Recession, and uh, our income got slashed. Um, I had it to, well, I voluntarily took a cut in pay. At the same time, uh, we had moved in with my mom for a period of time and had, had leased out our home, which ended up being a great thing because otherwise we would have lost it. We wouldn't have been able to afford the, the, the monthly payment on that. But we were looking to just get out of that part of town, the bench area. In, um, in 2010, we lost the Hillcrest Shopping Center and we actually had to start meeting at another church in the afternoons on Sunday in the bench area. And although everything was ready to go for us, it was really a, not such a vibrant time for the church. People just started showing up later and later and we realized that we have got to get out of this part of town and get over to where we know God has called us to where our property is. We both had an experience which was really amazing yeah. separately and um, really just really had yeah, the same vision. Yeah, you went vision. out to the church property and sat out there and prayed and it's like the Lord just showed you that we need to take a step of faith out here. I went out there, we had a tractor out of the property in the time, at that time, and I sat on the tractor and just, I just thought about Abraham moving into the land that God had given him as a promise. And we both felt like we just need to move yeah. out here. So we got a fifth wheel and moved out to the property and lived there for the next two years. And we loved it. We loved it, but it also, I think, just showed our church that we were serious about moving to this side of town and and just occupying this land. So for those many years that we couldn't really build, the one thing that we knew that we could do was to just pay save money, the land. pay it off. We could pray and we could pay the land off. Mm -hmm. And so we just sort of challenged the people in 2016, you know, look, we I think we had 113,000 left on, on the note. And uh, we said, let's just get this paid off. And over two years, and by 2017, we paid the land completely off. And, and we was... were so excited <laughs> well, on that Sunday. You know, we did a couple of uh, giving Sunday kind of things, but then that Sunday that we had paid it off, we were able to just do a, a Dave Ramsey, uh, we're debt free shout. Yeah, and that was so exciting. Service. That was really fun. Yeah. Everybody was just so happy to scream that out because we knew the next thing was gonna happen, you know, with our land. Eventually we had to get off the property and we moved back into our house, so all that happened. But then we, we met with this property developer who really spoke to us about selling part of the land because he said, what do you need all the land for? You know, you don't have the money to do this. You could sell some of the land and, and then you could build your church. And so we started looking into that. I think that was like 2015. Yeah. We started drafting potential subdivision ideas. And um, we thought that was a good idea, but we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> so <laughs> we started, uh, you know, working on that. And then I went to a pastor's conference and 
I get this call from Cindy and Cindy says, You won't believe this, but I feel like the Lord's calling me back into real estate. <laughs> and he knew immediately that that was true. I was more hesitant about it. Yeah, well, when she said that, I thought, I, I just knew that God was doing this to get us out to the property because at this point, we just saw that a subdivision is going to be the way that, that this happens as, as we try to sell off land. Now we came to this idea of doing a subdivision because we try to look in, we worked with another uh, real estate agent who, who you know, said, well, you can get this amount if we just sell off this land, but it wasn't anywhere near what we needed to build. So we thought we have to actually be involved in this in order for this to, to, to be a reality. We were able to um, get uh, somebody that was interested in doing the subdivision. And um, so we started working up those plans with him. We started going to the city of Meridian and getting uh, pre-approval for the subdivision. Then when we were in Israel in 2019, <laughs> yeah. we get a call and the guy that was gonna develop it said, I, what, I can't do it, out. I'm pulling I'm gonna, out. I need to work on some land in Eagle. And yeah. we were like, what? What, are you kidding me? <laughs> So, so we go back to the guy that had talked to us about uh, putting the subdivision in to begin with uh, or selling off part of the land. And I said, and we said, so this is what we're looking at doing. And he suggested that we get a hold of Zach Evans. And so we, we take all, everything we've done, the, the pre-approval from the city, we go to Zach's office and present it to him. And what, I mean, he was like. It was just so great because all the work that we poured into this over the years, he just looked at it and was like, this is something I would love to do. Yeah. And so we talked for a while and um, it was just worth all the hard work. There was a lot of challenges with the uh, city of Meridian and he still had more challenges after that, but mm -hmm. that was really exciting. And that was just a huge sign that, you know, God was in this and, and that he was excited about it. Of course, we also had, at the same time, we we're working on stuff with the church, putting together our design team with our architect, the builder, and then uh, our building team and how all that came together. Everybody that's on that building team, it's just, we've prayed them in. God has answered prayer. I'm amazed at the design team, how they've worked together with Zach even, and with our, our construction documents and then also with our own team putting that together. I think what's such a milestone now is after all of the years where we couldn't do anything, we tried in our own strength to make something happen. Uh, one thing we did learn is that we had to wait on the Lord. And, and what's very evident now is so much is coming together with all of these things, with you know the, the, the utilities being brought over there, the, you know, Zach Evans, the subdivision, the the uh, city approving us, the city council approving the subdivision and the church, and now breaking ground to see that berm and all of all of those hills that were there from the extra soil that we brought out, you know, all leveled out, all ready to go, graded, and it's just so evident that this is the Lord's work. This is the time. And all of these other things were just setting up for this moment. We're just seeing the Lord provide to this point. And now it's an issue of, you know, how, how do we finish this journey, okay? God has made it really clear. He's brought us here. He's answered prayer. He's put together the team. Um, now it's just a matter of raising the funds for it. And it still seems like a big, huge deal, but at the same time, we just know God is in it. That's what we wanted to just share with you now is that, is that we're just asking people to, to be a part of this story. It's the story that the Lord has written. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, that we are God's workmanship. And what's so cool is that, you know, the name of this subdivision is a uh, poema, which means workmanship or masterpiece. And, uh, you know, we're God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared before and that we should walk in them. And what's interesting to me is that God had in mind this whole thing and things that we haven't even seen yet. But 
He also had in mind what the nature and the DNA of our church would be. And over and over again, what people say to us when they come to our church is what? Oh, just that we're very welcome, we feel very welcomed, and we feel loved. And it's something that, you know, the Lord does for us. He welcomes us, He loves on us, He shows us how valued we are, and people feel the same way yeah. when they come into our church. And, and that's something God has done, that people come, they feel the love of God, and, and that's what we're inviting you into, to, to be part of this journey, to see where the Lord has called you, how he wants to use you. And it's gonna be uh, still a journey to do this, to, to finish this out. But even more importantly to us, is not so much the building project. I've seen so many churches that that's all they harp on. The thing that we've always wanted to do is never harp on that, never pressure, and definitely never stop doing ministry or outreach or missions or any of that. We believe that where God guides, God provides, that was pounded in my head by Pastor <laughs> Chuck for years, but it's true. And then also just know that if God does this, he's gonna do it in such a way that the ministry continues to happen. And we want it to be as, you know, uh, it has been said, not an Ishmael, but an Isaac. <laughs> the, the fulfilled promise of God, not the striving work of the flesh. So we just invite you to pray about how God would have you be a part of this church and a part of this next big step for us as a church getting out to our property. God bless you.